Let's start from the beginning though. First of all, Maria, name everything that you've been through health-wise. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. I drew a diagram. I was so frustrated when this all kind of happened that I literally was waiting in a waiting room. I think it was in the oncologist's office and I drew a diagram and I said, look at all these things that are going on in my body. Can we figure out the root cause of this? And they just kind of look at it and they're like, so anyway, because <laughs> name them. Because okay. I was thinking about it this morning. I mean, I was diagnosed with uh, a brain tumor in April 2017. It was a meningioma. That was a few months after my mom was diagnosed with her brain tumor. Hers was malignant. Uh, I've had Hashimoto's for many, many years. You know, that's kind of a, a very um, uh, intense autoimmune thing where, you know, I think it comes from being in fight or flight. And I was in fight or flight my whole life with my dad and his type one diabetes almost dying. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of stress around him growing up. So we lived on pins and needles. So that was kind of an obvious one. Um, I've never had to take medication. It's never really been a big effect on me. So luckily that hasn't been a big issue. Uh, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes last June. That knocked me off my feet because again, having had the trauma of watching my dad almost die all the time, now knowing I have this. I was so triggered and scared and it really depressed me. I was on the floor for a minute with that one, uh, even more so than the brain tumor, only because of the traumas that were associated with it from growing up. And then I got a handle on it pretty quickly. I was diagnosed with this neuroendocrine tumor in January. And as you know, it's, it's a form of pancreatic cancer. And I also had a fibroid, a large fibroid. So they went in to remove the fibroid. So when I was diagnosed with this tumor, the pancreatic tumor, I said... How were you diagnosed? How did, how did they find it? So I had been trying to figure out the source of some weird pains and throbbings and feelings I was having. I was having a lot of like throbbing in my upper left side. It never made sense to me that I was diagnosed with diabetes, either at 43 years old, someone who had cut sugar for two years and was eating so well um, and doing all the right things. Um, that didn't make sense to me. And so I was having this pain here and uh, there was definitely some stuff in my abdomen. Everything was all pushed and moved and I had severe abdominal pain. I went to the hospital. I, I literally couldn't stand up. For me to say I have to go to the hospital, it's like big. And I went to the hospital and they did a CAT scan and they said, they literally list the organs, spleen, unremarkable, pancreas, unremarkable, stomach, unremarkable. But when we look back, this pancreas was not unremarkable. The pancreas had a two centimeter mass on it. How did they not see it way back then? What I'm told is that different scans are better at identifying things. And so an MRI would have picked it up, I guess, better than the CAT scan. When they looked back, it was easy to identify with the knowledge that was it was there. But without the knowledge, you're told what? Go home, you're fine. Go home, you're fine. It doubled in size by January. And so the only reason I found it in January is this woman, Alina, grabbed me by the shoulders at Anastasia's house at her birthday party at the holidays and said, you have to come in, you have to come in. Um, I have this new company called Pernuvo and we're doing these scans and you need to come in. But she's very aggressive. And I was like, okay, okay. And I scheduled it and I was scared leading up to it because I knew stuff was going on. I'd been researching thermography. I was researching and constantly trying to find out what was the source of this pain. Was there any part of you that thought, maybe this is in my head, I've had so much going on, they showed nothing? No, because I know the body doesn't lie. We're taught to mask the pain, but the pain is a signal. It's telling you something's wrong. So I don't take anything unless absolutely necessary I'm listening to my body. And so I knew something was wrong. My husband thought I was being a little kooky, to be honest. He was like, Maria, you're really going overboard. I'm like, Kevin, I know something's wrong. And I go, when are you gonna believe me? <laughs> and so um, I went to do that scan and they found the mass. And he was like, you need to go to the hospital right now. So I left the scan. When they got the scan, did they say fibroid or they say this looks like pancreatic cancer? So, he saw a large mass on my pancreas and he was very clearly frightened and disturbed and like just 
he was, he needed consoling and I started consoling him. And so I could tell, and I know a mass on your pancreas isn't good. I know a mass on anything isn't good. So I texted my, my primary care physician, Dr. Aaron, and I said, I need to come in. We need an MRI right away. And they got me right in and I got the MRI and, uh, he, you know, confirmed it was there. And then from there we had to do a biopsy. What was your reaction? You've already been through all of these other I things. I was in shock. I was numb. I was terrified. I was like, this is a cruel joke. Like, how much more can I take? And you're hearing this knowing that you have a beautiful baby. Oh, please, kid. On the way. <laughs> and after just losing your mom. That's all I could think about. Because when I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, I remember... I mean, dealt with so much toxicity and so many things, and it was such a rough ride that I was like, oof, if this is it, let's go. I'm fine. And I didn't care. I knew that wasn't a good thing, but I didn't really care, other than I knew I had to take care of my mom. But I have to care now in a bigger way. And so the morning after they confirmed it at UCLA with the MRI, I was guttural crying. Kevin and I couldn't get out of bed. And I just kept looking at my, ch my mantle. I have all my church icons where I pray. And I was like, how could you finally bless me with a baby? And now I'm not going to get to meet her? Like, how is this possible? And so, yeah, I was, we were just like, like this. Like, what the? Especially with pancreatic cancer, to hear that yeah. word. Statistically, it's just a killer. Yeah. I when I read your headline, I just thought, what is happening with my friend now? Like, I, I yeah. couldn't even wrap my head around it. So yeah. you're, you get the diagnosis that what? That there is a tumor, there's a mm -hmm. mass that we're going to look into. Yeah. And then what was your next move? Well, what's crazy is <laughs> the biopsy, I think it was the biopsy paperwork that said it was consistent with adenoma carcinoma. I can't say the word, but the bad pancreatic cancer. And they didn't tell me. I only found that out when they gave the paperwork to People Magazine. I read the report. I'm like, oh, I never got a copy of this report. Because I kept checking my my chart to see, and it was never in there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is what they thought I had. And so the way Dr. Donahue, my surgeon, explained it, he goes, if you're going to get a pancreas cancer, this is the kind you want. It was the same thing with the brain tumors. I heard the same thing. If you're going to get a brain tumor, this is the one you want. And so... Um, yeah, it was, it was just like, how in the heck is, I, I mean, I was walking into an oncologist's office and I had to keep it secret. So I was like, this is so surreal. It was just, how did you wrap your oof. head around it? How did you, I'm still wrapping my head around it because I had, a, one of the things that was hard is I had to keep it quiet and I had to get to the other side first. I didn't want all of that energy coming in good, bad, or indifferent. I'm not, that's not how I operate. And so, um, did you hide it from the surrogate? That's the thing I just yes, thought about. Yeah, I did. I did. I was not going to let her be worried. She's carrying my baby. I wasn't going to let her worry whether I was going to be there or not. Um, so I just told her two days before the news broke, I said, Hey, you're going to be seeing some stuff. And, uh, and I told her and her husband, but, um, and how was Kevin? You said you were concerned. Rocked. Yeah. Rocked. This one was like just too hard to, to be uber positive about. But the more I thought about how much it didn't make sense, that's when I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Like, why would God give me a baby and then take me? I don't think he would. I know that that happens, but I didn't think that was my story. And so I clung to that. And then I used a lot of the tools that I learned here. Yes. Which was choose wonder over worry. And so once I started applying a lot of these techniques, things started getting easier to handle and things started just happening in the way I was wondering rather than worrying because what you focus on is what you feel and also what you end up with, right? Um, and there's, I mean, so many things that we've learned here, whether it's through Dr. Joe Dispenza or um, any of the other experts. I think about your, your career and your trajectory and how neat that it's led to this, mm. something so meaningful. Robin Roberts always says, make your mess your mission. Yeah. Whatever's going through, do you believe this has become your new mission? Oh, for sure. To help 
everybody. That's kind of always been in my DNA. I've always wanted to help people. I love sharing. If you see all of my books along the way, anything I've done on my own was always in that realm. And this show has saved my life. People before me were telling me that it was saving or changing their life with, through the comments, but now it saved mine because Alina wouldn't have been reaching out to me if I didn't have a health show. And all of the foundation that I've built from the experts who have come in here, I keep grabbing tools every day, put them in my pocket, yeah. and I use them as I need to. Um, it's been transformative. And so the pivot that just naturally happened because of a need for health and a need to focus on my health. A need for answers for everybody. A need for answers for my mom. Um, my mom went from a six to 12 month diagnosis to getting five years and it was because of what I did here on this show. Everything I was learning, all the people that were put in my place in front of me were to help us on this journey. So I'm so grateful that I got that brain tumor and that it led me down this path because this is my mission. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm sounding the alarms to everybody that health has to be as high a consideration as your career or more. I'm not gonna get greedy because it's gonna be hard to get people to even get to that place where yeah. they're equal. But without our health, we're nothing. And we have to be the CEO of our health. We cannot just leave it on the doorstep of doctors who have 15 minutes with you in an appointment. That system has its flaws. Once we're aware of what they're good at and what their weaknesses are, then we can fill those gaps with other people like a, a naturopath or other modalities. It's like you're the captain of your team. You gotta know where you're putting your players. Are you a clean bill of health now? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Let's do the, let's. Yeah. So right now, everything. Yeah, when he told me clear, I had gone. clear pathology, I was like, oh my God, thank you God. And then I told him, do, you have to go do for it again. Ups? I go, check it check again, because yeah. I know where you live. And if for <laughs> any reason you were wrong, I'm coming to get you. And I mean it. I'm from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Let's discuss the biggest miracle that is coming your way. Yes. Your baby girl. Yes. Uh, only share what you want to share. Mm -hmm. How long was this in the works? Did this happen pretty quickly once you and Kevin decided this was the path you were going to go down? Or was it a bumpy road as well? It was bumpy. It was long. I mean, listen, I started doing IVF like, and, and the process of all of this maybe 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago. And we tried naturally. We tried inseminations. Then after the brain tumor, my doctor said, you can't carry because hormones grow things. And so luckily he told me that because now with everything else too, uh, when we found our surrogate, it was three days before COVID started. Signed the paperwork, we're like, yeah, we're finally doing this. And then COVID hit. And so I called her up and I said, listen, we obviously cannot bring a baby into this world at this moment, we have to pause. We regrouped by summer when some things started to kind of calm down a little bit. But with the first surrogate, her lining wouldn't grow to that final stage, her uterine lining. So we couldn't implant or we would lose them. And it was really, really rough. And we kept hanging in and she kept hanging in. And then my doctor called me one day and she was like, we have to move on. That's not going to work. So we had to have a breakup call, which was so sad. And then we found this woman who uh, is another angel on earth. And, you know, it takes a year from the time you find them to even be able to implant. So these processes wow. take so long. And so we finally, we, you know, got it done and she's and coming. She's coming. What is it like for you now? You've already been through so much. Knowing now she's coming, she's here, she's healthy. I got to see the ultrasound. She's vibrant. <laughs> like this thing, this is finally happening. How, how do you feel overall about this point in your life? I'm so giddy. I'm so excited. I already love her so much. I talk to her every single day, um, whether it's energetically or I send voice, voice notes and she just kicks and moves around. She's very active. And I'm so excited. I'm nervous too. So I'm like reading books and studying and I'm racing around to get nurseries done and get all the things <laughs> you need to get. We're coming back for the nursery. Yeah. The way you decorate your style. I'm coming for this Thank nursery. You. This is going to be good. I didn't do a baby shower because of all this was like, it was too stressful to even come up with a guest list. I'm still healing currently. And so um, the funny thing is I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, the universe is giving me a baby shower because all these wonderful people are sending me things. So 
everything's coming. Um, it's so funny how, how things happen, right? And so um, I feel really blessed and... What would your mom think about this baby girl? Oh, she's the one who sent her. She knows, um, you know, I know she's excited. It's funny, my cousin yesterday texted me and she said, I can feel your mom and she's saying you have to slow down and you have to pause. And I'm like, I keep hearing that message, but I don't really know how. <laughs> so I'm working on that. And then I realized, oh, I think the baby's gonna be the mechanism for me to slow down and pause because I'm just gonna be with her and and I'm going to just be surrounded with love and a love that I know I can't even imagine fully because I've never gone through it. Um, but she said that she loves the nursery, especially what's on the walls. What's on the wall? And I go, I can't believe she knows. But, um, but it was a tribute to my mom and my grandma. And so I was like, oh my gosh, how, how crazy. But obviously I know she knows because she's watching. Uh, but my mom keeps sending me messages through people. Names. We're not going to give it away. Mm -hmm. But have you thought of any fun tribute or nickname or any fun thing? The name was always so fun, I think, to come up with the full name. and Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we have. It's funny. We've been looking at names for years. It's so fun. Because we've been doing this for years. And we finally settled on one in the Arctic. It was funny. We were in the Arctic this December. And we settled on one that we both loved and we thought was great. And... Uh, and so, yeah, we've we've got we've got some thoughts, but we have to meet her first. I was just and once thinking, we meet her, we'll know for sure what we're doing. I was just thinking about you and Kevin mm -hmm. talking about this. What a love story! Hmm. And where you end up now? You guys have been through it. How many yeah. years have y'all been together? I think it's twenty five. Twenty five years. Do you feel stronger than ever? Yeah. How would you describe where y'all are right now? I don't know. I feel like we're so, so tight and, you know, we really know how to do crisis well. Yeah. So we're really good at jumping in on everybody else's crises too. But, you know, we just, he's my rock and he, he helps me get through all of this stuff. And, um, we've been on this journey forever. Yeah. And I just feel so lucky. Like I, I, I know who I'm, I'm going to go the distance with and now we're going to have a baby and we're going to have this whole family. Hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully we don't fight over this baby. He's like, <laughs> you got to chill. Like, he's like, you got to chill. Everything doesn't have to be an A plus. It can be a B minus and stuff like that. I was like, oh, we're going to have some tips. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. It's kind of, oh God, the most yeah. magical time coming. Blue skies mm -hmm. ahead. I feel this.